Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to learn what to do when the second derivative test leads to the second derivative f dash dash of x being equal to zero at a stationary point. And for that we're going to consider the two functions that we see here. For each of them we need to find and classify any stationary points they may have. So let's get started. Looking at the first function we have here, to find any stationary points it has, the first thing we need to do is find any values of x at which its derivative equals to zero. So we'll start by finding f dash of x, that's the derivative, and using the power rule we quickly find that's equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. And the x coordinates of any of this function's stationary points are found by solving f dash of x equals to zero. In other words, we need to solve 3x squared minus 12x plus 12 equals to 0. And now, to solve this quadratic equation, we could use the quadratic formula, but we could also solve it by factoring, which I'll go ahead and do. Looking at the three terms here, we can see that they each have a common factor, which is 3, and that tells me that I can rewrite this as 3 times, in parentheses, x squared minus 4x plus 4 close parentheses equals to zero. And now I notice that this quadratic is in fact a perfect square. Indeed, x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to x minus 2 in parentheses squared. So solving f dash of x equals to zero reduces to solving 3 times x minus 2 squared equals to zero. And it doesn't take long to see that this has one single solution, which is x equals to 2. This tells us that the function has one single stationary point whose x-coordinate is 2, and in a quiz or an exam we would have to calculate the y-coordinate. And for that we replace every x that we see inside f of x by 2. But for the sake of saving time in this tutorial I'll go ahead and state that the y-coordinate of the stationary point is y equals to f of 2, and by all means check, but that leads to 3. So this function's stationary point has coordinates 2, 3. And that's the first step done. We move on to step 2, and in step 2 we use the second derivative test to try and classify this stationary point. For that, the first thing we need to do is find this function's second derivative. In other words, we need to find f dash dash of x. Well, starting from this function's first derivative that I'm boxing right now, all we need to do is differentiate this with respect to x. And in doing so, we quickly find that the second derivative is equal to 6x minus 12. And now that we have the second derivative, we use the second derivative test and evaluate f dash dash of x when x equals to 2. So let's see, we have f dash dash of 2 equals to 6 times 2 minus 12, and we quickly see that's equal to 0. But when we learnt about the second derivative test, we saw that if the second derivative equals to 0 at the stationary point, then the test is inconclusive. So what do we do? Well, the idea here is to study the sign of the first derivative, and for that I'm going to use a sign table. Now let me start by splitting this page in two, there we go, and I'll add a little intermediate column here. So, since the second derivative test is inconclusive, we fall back on the first derivative. Remember, we saw that f dash of x is equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. But we also saw further down that we could actually factor f dash of x and state that f dash of x is equal to 3 times x minus 2 squared. And rather than leaving this as x minus 2 squared, I'll go ahead and write that this is equal to f dash of x, which is 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 2. Now that I've done that, each of these three factors in f dash of x will be one of the rows of my sign table. Here's what I mean. I make a table looking something like this. There we go. And the very top row will represent the possible values of x. Now, f dash of x is perfectly well-defined for all real numbers, 
And to highlight that fact, I write negative infinity on the far left-hand side of the row and positive infinity on the far right-hand side. And now, since f dash of x equals to 0 when x equals to 2, I add that to the row as well, and I put a little 2 right here. And that 2 allows me to make a column all the way through my sign table, like so. All right, now that that's done, I make a row for each of the three factors we have in f dash of x. So the first factor is just 3. So I write 3 here, and I make this row. There we go. Now, in each of these two cells, I need to indicate the sign, positive or negative, of 3 as x takes on values from negative infinity to positive infinity. And it's quite clear that regardless of what x does, 3 will always be 3 and will be positive. So I write plus, plus. Now I make the next row with the factor x minus 2. So I write that here, that's x minus 2. And I complete the row, like so. Now, x minus 2 will be equal to 0 when x equals to 2. And so I indicate that right here on the vertical bar. If x is less than 2, then x minus 2 will be negative. For instance, if x were equal to negative 3, then negative 3 minus 2 would be negative 5. And so I write a negative sign here. And on the other hand, if x is greater than 2, then x minus 2 will be positive. So I write positive here. Finally, we look at the last factor we have here, which again is x minus 2. And so I write that here, that's x minus 2. And I complete the row. And once more, this will be equal to 0 when x equals to 2. It will be negative for x values less than 2 and positive for x values greater than 2. Now that I've taken care of all three of these factors, I add a row, f dash of x, that's the derivative, whose sign will be the product of each of the three signs that we have above. So between negative infinity and 2, the sign of f dash of x will be positive times negative times negative, which will be positive. It will be equal to 0 when x equals to 2, and for x values greater than 2, it will be positive times positive times positive, which again is positive. Now this sign table tells us that the derivative f dash of x is positive on either side of the stationary point. So the curve f of x increases from negative infinity up to 2, it reaches a stationary point and carries on increasing after that. And to illustrate that further, we could even draw that underneath our sign table here. I could add a long, tall row right here, which I'll call f of x. Since f dash of x is positive, f of x must be increasing. At 2, it reaches the stationary point 2, 3, which I can write on my table as well. That's 2, 3. And it then carries on increasing after 2. So what we're dealing with here is an increasing horizontal point of inflection. Point of inflection. Done. And if we had a calculator and were able to plot this function, we'd quickly be able to confirm this result. And indeed, looking at the curve we have here, it's clear that the stationary point with coordinates 2, 3 is an increasing horizontal point of inflection. All right, so those are the steps. When looking for stationary points and when trying to classify them, we work in either two or three steps. First of all, we figure out the value of x at which the first derivative equals to zero. In other words, we actually find the stationary points. Secondly, we attempt to use the second derivative test. And then, either the second derivative is positive or negative, in which case we'll be able to determine whether it's a maximum or a minimum, or else it will equal to zero. And if that's the case, we'll need to add on a third step, which I'll write here, step three, in which we study the sign of the first derivative using a sign table like the one I made here. Once that's done, we'll be able to conclude about the nature of the stationary point. All right, now before working through this second example, let me point out that a common mistake is to think that as soon as the second derivative equals to zero, then we must be dealing with a horizontal point of inflection. And that is in fact incorrect. And to show that, let's get started with this example. Now again, the first thing I need to do is to find this function's derivative. And looking at this function f of x, we quickly find that f dash of x is equal to 4x to the power of 3. 
Next, we need to find any values of x at which f dash of x equals to 0. In other words, we need to solve 4x cubed equals to 0. And it doesn't take us long to see that this equation only has one solution, and that is x equals to 0. So this function, again, has one single stationary point whose x-coordinate is 0, and whose y-coordinate will be y, which equals to f of 0. And that's equal to 1. So the stationary point has coordinates 0, 1. And that's the first step done. We move on to the second step, step 2, in which we attempt to use the second derivative test. And for that, we need this function second derivative. So starting from f dash of x, which I'm boxing right now, we differentiate this with respect to x to find that f dash dash of x is equal to 12x squared. Now, evaluating this second derivative at the stationary point, in other words, evaluating this when x equals to 0, leads to f dash dash of 0, which equals to 0. And so once more, the second derivative at the stationary point is equal to 0. And the second derivative test is therefore inconclusive. So without thinking, we move on to step 3, in which we study the sign of the first derivative. And for that, we make a sign table for f dash of x, which equals to 4x cubed. And I'll go ahead and do that on the far right hand side. I'll just make a few dots to separate things. There we go. So I construct my table, something looking like this. There we go. And just as before, the top row is 4x. And since f dash of x is perfectly well defined for all real numbers, I highlight that fact by writing negative infinity on the far left hand side and positive infinity on the far right hand side. And since there's only one value of x at which the first derivative equals to zero, and that's zero, we write that on the top row right here and we draw a vertical line beneath it. There we go. Now what are the factors that we need to enter inside our table? Well looking at f dash of x here, if we wanted to we could say that f dash of x equals to 4 times x times x times x. But when the function is this simple, we don't really need to break it up into so many factors. Instead, we can just consider the top row as being 4. There we go. And it's quite clear that 4 is positive for all real numbers, so I write plus and plus. And on the next row, I'll go ahead and say x cubed. There we go. Now, x cubed will equal to 0 when x equals to 0, so I write that here and it's negative for x values less than zero and positive for x values greater than zero. And since f dash of x equals to the product of four and x cubed, on the next row we can write f dash of x and its sign will be positive times negative, which is negative. It will equal to zero when x equals to zero and positive times positive, which is positive. And so in this case, we can see that on either side of the stationary point, f dash of x changes sign. Indeed, it goes from negative to positive. And this suggests that we're dealing with a minimum. And to illustrate that, we can add an extra bit of space under the table like we did before. There we go. And we can call this f of x. And from negative infinity up to zero, the curve goes downwards, which I can show with an arrow here going down. It then reaches a stationary point with coordinate 0, 1, which I can add to my table right here, 0, 1. And for x values greater than 0, it goes upwards since f dash of x is positive. And I show that with an arrow going upwards. And looking at this, it's quite clear that f of x reaches a minimum at 0, 1. And I can quickly write that minimum. There we go. And there we have it. We now know what to do when the second derivative test is inconclusive. And we've seen that when it is inconclusive, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're dealing with a horizontal point of inflection. Indeed, it can in fact be either a minimum or a maximum, or of course, a horizontal point of inflection. And that's it for this tutorial.